We have with us today, Mr., as we call him, Panama, but his real name is? Reynaldo Valdez Paz. Ronaldo Valdez Paz. Panama because he's from Panama. It's the reason we call him Panama. Panama used to play professional soccer. And he's not playing professional soccer now, but he plays for how many different soccer teams? One, two, three, four teams. Four. And what are those four teams you play for? I play for Rush Real. Um, I play in the Quail League also for Rush Real. And also, I play for the over 50. And You're not over 50, are you? No, no, yet, not yet. But, you know, I'm, I'm a guest player. And also for the 35 and over. And the Major Island Soccer Organization. Don't you also play for that MISO? Is it MISO or MISO? Yeah, MISO, yeah. And what does MISO stand for? Major Island Soccer Organization. Wonderful. What position do you play? Well, I play multiple positions. But most importantly, I play striker. And what exactly is a striker? A striker is an attacker, the person who actually uh, score goals. Yeah. Okay, so they Simple score play. a lot of goals. Yes. All right. Yeah. What's your average? Well, per season, I average approximately like 19, 20, 20 goals, 21 goals in 14 games. What professional team have you played for, and what countries have you played for? I used to play in Panama for uh, Sonero Football Club, but I started in Paraiso. That's my alma mater. And then from there, I went to Sporting Rio in Brazil and Rio. That's awesome. As a professional football player, what inspired you to start playing football? Well... Football always been an escape uh, from poverty in Panama. But I was inspired by my uncle, Claudio, and my cousin, who recently passed away, uh, Ernesto Lopez. Oh, I'm sorry yeah. to hear that. My and, condolences. And they were my greatest inspiration because I saw them playing since I was really, really early. Was he older than you? Yeah, I was maybe like around four years old when I fell in love with soccer. Really, four yeah, years four old? Years old. You allowed to play soccer at the age of four in Panama? Yes, we were playing in the Urban League and pick up games and things like that. And that's how, you know, I was able to evolve. So were you any good at four years old, really? Uh, I wanna say my entire life I was attracted by the uh, playing style of players like Pele, Maradona, oh, yeah. and uh, and that was the biggest inspiration behind my personal inspiration because I saw that they used to watch him play. He passed away last year, yeah? Yeah. How many children did he have? Twelve, I think, maybe more? Twelve, thirteen, something like yeah. that. Yeah. And you wanted to be like him when you grew up? I am like him. Really? In what way? <laughs> With my children. Really? <laughs> I got so it, 17 it, it, children. No, <laughs> no way. No, I'm just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> That's awesome. What actually, did football have anything to do with you coming to Hawaii? Uh, no, because I came looking for an opportunity, better, um, better economy. So is football soccer or football in Panama? Is it football or is it soccer? No, it's football. Football. We call it football. So the only time you refer to it as soccer is when you're in America? Yes, yes. In America, our sport is being popularized as soccer because the traditional uh, American football here, basically, uh, educational-wise, everybody knows as football. And then we respect that because is 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 the language okay well how did you prepare for a big game when you played professional soccer well for big game in professional soccer we most importantly study the the tapes the strategies that the other team normally use and also uh, we go to 
uh, uh, intense training. Mm -hmm. we, we train five days a week. We rest. What would that consist of, that training? Well, the training consists of running five miles three times a week, and then also consists of push-up, drills, shooting, and different strategies for that specific. Did you have a certain diet? Yes. Also, our diet imply a lot of pasta during the week which gives us a lot of energy for the very next day. So do Panamanians eat a lot of pasta, or love is it, it just you? No, 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 we love pasta. Really? We really love pasta, because mainly, almost everybody understands the the value of pasta, carb. Well, so it gives us energy. Share that with know. us, the value yeah. of it. Oh, the value of carb, carbs is the major things they, in sport especially in soccer, we use because as runners, like professional runners, marathon runners, and uh, we understood, you know, the importance of have good energy, good level, good, you know, um, yeah. the carbs, it give us that. You, you know, know, about a month ago, I had to interview Mike Tyson mm -hmm. over the phone, and one of the things he said about preparing for boxing is that he can't have no sex at least six weeks while training for a fight. Is it the same way with professional soccer? Well, Do you have to limit your sex life for it? Yes, you know. Um, one of those things that was being mandated by the coaches and the training staff was no sex. We was allowed to have sex once a week. Once a week. Normally it was Saturday night before the game. You can have, you can have pasta, but you can have sex. Yeah. So okay. sex was one of those things that was off limit because it take away from the entire training that you did during the week. Okay. Well, what would be your most memorable moment as a professional soccer player? Um, winning championships was something that until today I still remember. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the losses that we have during those final games, semifinals, until today, um, uh, uh, I fantasize about and dream about or got nightmares about games that we lost <laughs> in the last. Of course, that would be memorable. Of course, <laughs> it was very difficult, and and until today, it's like I wish I could go back and do things differently, you know, because at times when we in that position. Succeeding, we you know taking things as, as serious, mm -hmm. and we still break rules like not having sex, you know, during the week, and it was reflected during the important games. Yeah, the level of conditioning that you were supposed to have versus what you was uh, displaying. Well, how did you stay motivated during those tough times when you couldn't have the things you wanted? Food. Pasta. 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 Pasta was, was a big supplement for us. Uh, it was a substitute for sex. Okay. You know, because we know the more pasta we consume, more energy we have. And then also, uh, we feel more ready, more prepared. And it was a challenge, but as long as we stay away from that way of thinking, we were succeeding. Until today, um, I see people still follow the regimen. And recently a story came out that sex actually do not affect the performance of a soccer player in the field. You're kidding. <laughs> yeah. After all those years After of all years, abstinence, they, yeah. somebody really did a study yeah. and came forward with the, yes. that that is and, not a problem. And I was so wow. impressed because, <laughs> wow, I could have, instead of 17 kids, I could have, Maybe 34. Wow. <laughs> well, this question, what advice would you give to young, aspiring, we would say soccer players, you would say footballers from other countries like Panama, Africa, that's not in America? My biggest advice to them is don't dream about going to the World Cup. No. My biggest advice is the, instead of be dreaming about going to the World Cup or qualifying your team for the World Cup, dream about winning a World Cup. 
that's the difference between Brazilian kids and kids from different countries in Latin America. Like for example, a kid from Panama like me, I was dreaming to be part of the national team and to qualify for the World Cup. Mm -hmm. But a kid from Brazil, he was dreaming about being in the national team and win a World Cup. Wow. That's the most important thing that wow. I can advise to any kid in sport. That's awesome. I never thought about it that way. And footballers that live in America fail to realize um, how blessed, how truly fortunate American players are. Because the American dream allowed the American players to have so much more scouting opportunities and, and opportunities that the young, inspiring footballers from other countries just doesn't have. And some of the greatest footballers are from countries outside of America. Will you agree? Uh, yeah. And yeah. why do you think that is? Um, I believe it's the, the way, the opportunities, mm -hmm. you know, because when the opportunity is granted. There are few in between in other countries yes. and there are more opportunities yes. in America. Yeah, it is. And knowing exactly that the opportunities are there as limited that they can be in other places. Um, that's what made the difference. What are your goals, what you say, for the future, both individually and as part of your team that you play for here in Hawaii? Well, um, be, become the first professional soccer coach Really? For the state of Hawaii. So are you saying that to say that perhaps in the near future there will be a professional soccer team in yes. Hawaii? Because, is that in the works? Uh, it, it is in the making because guys like Arian, Nan, Chin, and Sergio Bolioli, and people who These are, are the guys that fought for, uh, they were about to turn the soccer com complex into a landfill. Yeah. And the guys you're naming now are some of the key uh, men who kept that from happening. Yeah. Uh, what do you think made, what do you think saved the soccer field from becoming a landfill? And trust and believe when I tell you. I grinned for a week when I read in the news that it was not going to happen. I even wrote a letter uh, two-page letter um, along with all the signatures because I was against it as well and I'm, I was so happy when, when we learned that it wasn't going to happen what do you think was the because the, it happened they changed their mind so fast minds have never changed that fast that were made up as their minds were made up because this started circulating around a year ago and everything just happened so fast to change I can't help but wonder, do, do you think somebody put some money in somebody's pocket or what made that no, change? No, no. Uh, I believe the, the, the soccer community is a very strong community. Okay. The soccer community consists of thousands and thousands and thousands of people. But you know, Hawaii is a state that doesn't have not one professional ball team. Mm -hmm. With all of the ballers here, there is not one professional team in the whole state of Hawaii. Okay. The first professional team in the whole state of Hawaii will be a soccer team. And do you see that in the yes. future, like near future? In the near future, I want to say maybe between the next, in between the next 10 to 15 years, we're going to have a professional team thanks to the support of companies like Nan Inc. Thanks to the well, support I want to let you know that there are going to be professional scouters looking at this video okay. that go from country to country, state to state, and I want you to send a message out to those professional scouters. Take the time. Come to the state of Hawaii. Take a look at the different club. Well, most importantly, take a look at Rush, which is the largest and the most organized team, soccer teams, and the most impactful teams 
in the United States of America. The club rush is something they constantly keep growing with the most amount of teams in the state of Hawaii. The academy, the Rush Academy, located in Aiea, here in the state of Hawaii. Take a look at every single player, and you'll be able to see that there is enough talent to bring to the national team and to bring to any professional team in the state of Hawaii, from the state of Hawaii. Now, the most talented people that I ever played soccer with is here in the state of Hawaii. Really? The most amount of people that I saw that is being underrated with opportunities in the state of Hawaii. Yes, we do have few some professional soccer players, females and males, they constantly are representing the state of Hawaii week after week. Yes, same thing with in college. Females too? Females. But you know, females are doing the thing in sports now. Yeah. They're making and female general wow. managers. Yeah. I mean, top so, dogs. You so know, we, we have we have a little bit of everything in the state of Hawaii. That's awesome. And you hear that, Matt? And the professionalism that is going to be coming out of the state of Hawaii in the next 10 to 15 years is amazing. That makes me very happy. Because nothing but discipline, especially the club rush. There's other clubs, you know, they're... So who's the owner of Club Rush? The owner of Club Rush, the president of the club, is in the mainland. But in the state of Hawaii is Arian. One of my teammates that I play with week after week in the 45 and over. So we is play this a league? Also for Rush. Is it a league? Yeah, for Rush Real. And then, um, but it's, um, it's, it's incredible the work that he's doing and he put it for these kids and the teenagers and everybody more, even adult, you know. Shout out to my boy, Arian, and the whole Rush organization. Much love and respect. How do you balance your professional and personal life? How do you balance that? Well, in one way or other, they are intertwined. Because uh, it was so unfortunately that at times, professional soccer players in a, country, in a third world country, they still have to work. Mm -hmm. Like at that particular time when I was playing in Panama, I was being paid fifteen dollars. One five. One five. Fifteen. To go to to for transportation during the week to make it to the soccer training, and it was being three dollars per day. But I was working for the government at that time. I was so fortunate that I was working for the government, and then basically I was in a need of finance. So I was able to make it, and I was getting paid $200 a month for my contract. And, and it, was, it, was, it was decent money at the time playing in Panama because uh, after work, I go training, and after training, I go home, and mm -hmm. after home, you know, I was doing all the things that I was needing to do. And, um, and it, was, it was a well... Well balanced, but it, was, but it was intertwined. You know, your story remind me of the young man that was just graduated from uh, Michigan, one of the Michigan universities, and he was selected here last week in the NFL. He's from Hawaii. He's from Maui, born and raised. Wow. A Roman Wilson. Now, what he wow. did was, and what his parents did for him, they would fly him over here every day to go to school to, um, what's the name of that school where all of the, Marcus and all of the NFL players, they went to high school there because they have the, the connection, the NFL connection. Um, Kabuku? No, uh, St. Louis. St. Louis. Yes. Louis. They flew him from Maui every day his uh, last year of high school to go to St. Louis because of the connection they have with the NFL. And for a whole year after he graduated uh, and went to Michigan, this last week, he made it to the uh, NFL. Um, That's right. The Pittsburgh Steelers wow. picked him up. We also have another local boy here on Honolulu that was picked up by the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're saying that just really and truly, um, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Um, Can you? 
can you share a behind the scenes story from the time as a footballer? Uh, can you share a behind the scenes story from your time as a footballer? Behind the scenes, it was a lot of people that want us to succeed. Uh, the training staff, they was giving us a lot of advice, recommendations, and uh, and overall, they was doing an amazing job making sure that we don't play in any urban league, that we don't play in places where we actually could get hurt because out of jealousy and envy and things that can be a potential danger for upcoming players. Um, but it always happens to be the need of a player, mm -hmm. not financially, but the need of playing. You know, the, the player always wants to play. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the maturity of those guys who was always behind the scene, behind us, uh, I want to say get to the point that we was able to recognize the importance of staying healthy because it's easy to play soccer, get hurt, and get more injuries mm -hmm. because we're not resting enough and we don't allow our body to recover or to heal from any uh, trauma that yeah. could happen during the, during the game. So we was having a massage therapies, we was having... Uh, doctor, uh, the diet, they were, the dietitian, you know. Uh, we have an acupuncture? No, at that particular time, because that coming from Asia, you know, at that particular time, we was having just guys who were specialized in massaging, mm -hmm. and uh, big up to Pollo, you know. Um, but they actually... Did it help? Yeah, because I remember before that I reached to that level, they have a massage therapy, I always was playing in pain. I, ne I didn't remember one game that I was pain-free until those things was implemented mm -hmm. into the uh, club. Okay. We're going to wrap it up with one last question because I promise not to keep you very long, and I want to be a woman of my word. So the last question is, what do you enjoy doing outside of football to relax and unwind? Well, Especially here in Hawaii. Well, here in the state of Hawaii, uh, besides playing soccer, one of the most things that I real that, that, that I realized that I really really enjoy is is quiet time. Really. Yeah, quiet time. Important days like Sundays. I I, I treasure these days. It's quiet because I had the opportunity to help somebody in the sport, you know, coach somebody or assist somebody. Do you coach yeah. and assist and yes, tutor yes. perhaps in soccer? Yes, yes. I still I still coach it, I still assist, I still help those who are less fortunate, you know. So if scouts needed to contact you uh, to get video of somebody that rather than fly out here to scout them themselves, would they be able to connect with you for yeah. that? Yeah, definitely. You They're know, definitely yeah. looking I for can, that. I can, I share I that can with guide you. them to the best uh, games and opportunities that they can create for themselves and those guys and those girls and those uh, Oh, I just love the way you're not player. leaving the girls out, you know, because... Um, I did say those guys, and I should have said guys and girls, and I, and I just love the way you added the girls in there. You didn't leave the girls out. Yeah, I love that. You know, and I coach women, you know, and so I can see uh, a lot of talent. That is and so great. That's wonderful. That's just awesome. Besides football, we, uh, you do have a life where you work for the largest construction company in the state of Hawaii, NAN Inc. Uh, what do you f do for them? Well... I do different things for the company and I I am uh, a foreman and also I am a operator. Crane operator. Yeah, crane operator. Uh, you can't play soccer up there, <laughs> not in no crane. <laughs> <laughs> but the owner of Nanink, which is Mr. 
Nan Chulchio. Big up, respect, much love. Is that the same guy they call Patrick? Yeah, that's him. Okay, and he's a former uh, professional. I believe he was an indoor soccer player. Really? Yeah. Professional? And then, yeah, and then that's one of those Does he still there. play? Yeah, he still play, in fact. So this man... We are teammates. This man owns the largest construction company in Hawaii, and he's a soccer player. He's a soccer player. He has to sponsor the largest soccer club in the state of Hawaii. I did not know that. So there is so much that can be done and so much work to be done for where soccer is concerned. If we have that um, kind of people here, it shouldn't be a problem getting a professional team, soccer team here in Hawaii. It will not be a problem. And you're sure that's going to happen? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's going to happen. Well, you heard it from Panama here first. Thank you so much. This means so much to me and, and to uh, sports management worldwide and to the soccer scoutings and, and that will be looking at this, and I'm sure they will be contacting you. So I will need to get your address, your email address, and your phone number because they, you will be contacted by them. Okay. Thank you very much. In Honolulu, Hawaii, I am Deborah Butler. Thank you.